in judgment in the appeal, Michael and others, and the Chief Constable of South Wales Police and another. Lord Tilson will explain the judgment of the court. The police owe a duty to protect members of the public from violent crime. It is a duty owed to the entire population. The question in this case is whether and to what extent that public law duty may translate into an actionable duty under the law of negligence to take reasonable steps to protect an individual member of the public who they may have reason to know is the subject of a particular uh, threat. This question has arisen in various forms in a number of previous court cases, several of which have been decided at the highest level. But in this case, the court has been asked to revisit the subject and reconsider the previous case law. The facts giving rise to the case are stark and tragic. They involve the murder in August 2009 of a young woman, Miss Michael, who lived with her two children, the older of whom was aged seven, in the outskirts of Cardiff. Late that night, she was visited unexpectedly by an ex-partner. He was enraged to find her with another man. He was violent towards her and took her car to drive the man home, saying that he was going to come back and fucking kill you. She dialed 999 from her mobile phone to tell the police. This was at 2.29 a.m. The nearest police station was five or six minutes away by car. The call was picked up by a Gwent telephone mast and routed to the Gwent Police Call Centre. Ms. Michael told the call handler what had happened. The call handler explained to her that her address was in the area of South Wales Police, not the Gwent Police, and that she would pass on the call to the police in Cardiff. She graded the call as requiring an immediate response and straight away called the South Wales Police. She gave an abbreviated version of what Ms. Michael had told her but did not make any mention of a threat to kill. The South Wales Police graded it as a call which required a response within an hour. At 2.43 a.m., that is 14 minutes after the first call, Ms. Michael rang 999 a second time. The call was answered. Ms. Michael was heard to scream and the line went dead. Police officers arrived at her home eight minutes later to find her dead. She had been brutally attacked and stabbed many times. The attacker was soon found. He later pleaded guilty to her murder and was sentenced to life imprisonment. The Independent Police Complaints Commission carried out an investigation and made serious criticisms of both Gwent Police and South Wales Police. This action is brought against the two police forces by the parents and children of Miss Michael. For present purposes, it is not necessary to differentiate between the two police forces. There are two heads of claim. The first is that the police were negligent at common law. The second is that the police were in breach of their duties under the Human Rights Act and Articles 2 or 3 of the European Convention. The police applied for both claims to be struck out or for summary judgment in their favour. Their application was dismissed at first instance, but was allowed in part by the Court of Appeal. The Court of Appeal held unanimously that on the fact set out in the claim, the police did not owe a private law duty of care towards Miss Michael to prevent her from the grievous injuries caused by the wrongful acts of her ex-partner, for whom they were not responsible. By a majority, the Court of Appeal held that the second part of the claim, based on the Human Rights Act and the European Convention, should go to trial. The claimants appeal against the decision of the Court of Appeal to strike out the negligence claim, and the police appeal against its decision not to strike out the second claim. Most of the argument has been about whether, in the circumstances described, the police owed Ms. Michael a common law duty of care in negligence. By a majority of five to two, this court has decided that the Court of Appeal was right on that issue. On the second uh, issue, the court is unanimous that the decision of the Court of Appeal was right. The reasons are set out in the judgment now being handed down. The court has reviewed all the relevant domestic case law and has also examined the jurisprudence in other common law countries and at Strasbourg. The arguments on the negligence issue have been largely but not entirely a rerun of arguments in previous cases, including particularly Bancoli and the Hertfordshire Police and Smith and the Sussex Police, 
which the House of Lords heard together and decided in 2008. The majority has not been persuaded that the decisions in the previous case law were wrong, although it is critical of parts of the reasoning in some of the early cases. It is a general principle of common law that a defendant is not ordinarily liable for injury to a claimant caused by the conduct of a third party. This is because the common law doesn't generally impose liability for pure omissions. It is a feature of modern society that many areas of life are subject to forms of state-organized regulation or assistance for the protection of the public. But if the system breaks down, whether through organizational or individual failure, um, the uh, uh, body concerned is not ordinarily held liable for deliberate harm caused by someone else. There are countless examples of this um, principle being applied. So there's no question of a police being given a special exemption. The question is whether there should be a, an exception by which a duty of care is owed by the police in circumstances such as those described. To the general principle, there may undoubtedly be exceptions. One recognised exception is where the wrongdoer is under the control of the defendant, but that does not apply here. Another is where the defendant has undertaken responsibility to the claimant on which the claimant has relied, but the court is not persuaded that that exception applies in this case. It is always open to the um, court to create new exceptions, but the majority is not persuaded that it ought to create uh, an exceptional category covering the facts of this particular case. Any such exception would have to have a uh, general principled basis uh, 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 and it would go beyond the facts of this particular case. Um, uh, uh, the majority does not consider that there is such a um, um, uh, general principle which may be found, uh, which would be both uh, 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 logical and acceptable and coherent uh, and would not lead to um, uh, all sorts of um, anomalies. Uh, the reasons for this conclusion are set out more fully in the judgment. The minority, uh, Lord Kerr and uh, Lady Hale, uh, have taken a different view. Uh, Lord Kerr considers that there should be recognised a sufficient relationship of proximity so as to create a duty of the police in negligence where there's a closeness of association between the claimant and the defendant, such as where the information is communicated to the defendant, uh, where the information conveys to the defendant that serious harm is likely to befall the intended victim if urgent, is not, urgent action is not taken, where the defendant might reasonably be expected to provide protection in those circumstances, and uh, where the defendant uh, 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 can reasonably provide for the intended victim's protection without unnecessary danger to himself. Applying that uh, principle, um, the present case um, uh, plainly uh, falls within it. Um, Lord Kerr does not consider that the general um, uh, exemption from duty to protect others from third party harm is appropriate for members of a police force whose uh, duty it is to provide protection. There is, uh, in his view, a fundamental principle that legal wrongs should be remedied, uh, which um, um, uh, 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 applies in this case. Uh, Lady Hale supports Lord Kerr's analysis. Uh, she uh, uh, particularly identifies uh, that uh, uh, the duty of the police to protect the public in circumstances such as the present is, is matched by a corresponding um, uh, restriction which the uh, law places on individuals to resort to self-help. Uh, and uh, that is a further reason for uh, recognizing that in, fa uh, in cases of this kind, the police ought to owe a duty of care. On the second part of the claim, the court is unanimous that it raises questions of fact which require investigation at the trial. The court would like to add its considerable sympathy uh, for Miss Michael's family. Thank you very much. The court is now adjourned.